Savage, yeah. Classy, bougie, ratchet, yeah. Sassy, moody, hey, nasty, hey, yeah. Hacking, stupid. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to achieve that video look that you see in the beginning. In just a few steps, this video is beginner friendly, so don't worry. If you've never done it before, you are in the right spot to be. The wig that I'm using is about two years old, and um, it's about time she get a new look. When I tell y'all, she done been through it, she done been through it. And today we're just going to freshen her up and make her look brand new. So... If you're ready to get to it, let's do it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Grab you a snack and stay tuned because we're about to do the do. All right? Okay. All right, guys. So here she is. And yes, yeah, she needs a makeover. She is so mad, so naughty. My hands don't even want to go through it anymore. Um, this is a lace closure wig that I sewn myself on my sewing machine. Here, description will be in the description bar down below. We're just going to get started and turn this disaster into a masterpiece. I wanted to give y'all a close-up on this scalp, like lace wear. That is natural. So I'm starting off with the empty bleaching bowl and I am putting on some gloves. Please make sure you are using gloves during the process of this bleaching. It is important. I'm going to use quick blue bleaching powder. I think I use between three to four cups of bleach and the mixture. I don't think I used any more of that. Then you're going to see me add in some 40 developer. You can also use 35, but I wanted to use 40 because it changes faster. Um, you're going to see me add a little bit of the developer in the beginning and then I'm going to mix it up but as you see later on it's not to the consistency of which i wanted it to be for the process of which i'm going to do which you'll see in a little bit so um you'll see me go back in i think maybe once or twice to add a little bit more developer just to get that consistency that i wanted so stay tuned So I'm mixing, 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 and as I stated, I went back in and add more developer because it's not to the consistency in which I want it to use the method in which I am going to use. So I believe this here gave me my final consistency that I wanted, and I'm going to mix everything up. Make sure you mix very well. You want to get all the developer, all the powder, all mixed in, all the lumps out, and yep, this seems to be the consistency that I need. So now at this point, you're going to see me use some tea pens and I am just going to secure her because we're going to take this time to start detangling and you don't want to snatch your wig off in the midst of detangling. You want it to stay put. So I use about four tea pens, one on each side, including the front and the back to secure it. Because this is a water wave wig, I use some conditioner and water in a spray bottle to detangle it. I'm going to start off by taking little piece sections and putting the rest up in a little scrunchie to keep it out of my way. This is how I'm going to start my detangling process. Um, I'm going to wet it. Again, this is a water wave wig, so it works very well with water. Let's not forget there's conditioner mixed in with the water. And I'm going to start at the ends and work my way up to start detangling. you're starting from the ends and working your way up do not start directly from the roots because you're going to begin to pull hair out of your wig and you don't want to do that if you need to add more water as you're going along that's okay you can do that just to make detangling way easier um, this detangling method doesn't have to only be used for wet and wavy hair you can use it on straight hair body wave loose wave kinky curly any type of hair that seems to be too matted for you working with it on a wet 
wet state rather than a dry state is way much easier. Um, also, if you are working with curly hair, you want to use a wide tooth comb. I do have a wider tooth comb and I could not find it at that time. So I use my medium tooth comb, but working with curly hair, you definitely want to use a wide tooth comb and not anything small. Um, what I'm doing at this point is braiding up the section that I had already detangled so it stays out of my way and I don't get it mixed in with the other sections. I'm going to continue to do the detangling process. At this point, I'm going to shut up so you can finish watching the video. Video, so enjoy. So at this point, I'm removing my braids and I'm going through the hair one more time, making sure that everything is detangled and straightened and ready to go. Um, if I did not mention before, I love this wig because of its curl pattern and how you just really need water just to detangle it and bring it back to life. But it is looking great. Let's move on to the next step. Already divided our hair into four sections off camera and I'm going to use the mixture that we made earlier to apply it to our hair um you will see that i originally was going to start applying the mixture using a brush but if you want it to be perfect and you're doing from root to tip then i recommend you use a brush but because i'm not doing the roots and i want to keep the dark roots i'm going to use my hands to apply the mixture um Typically, you want to start at the tips of the hair and then work your way up to the roots. As you can see, I started from the mid sections. Um, I guess it's a-okay. I got the result that I wanted. Didn't really bother me. Um, I believe I'm up to about the third section at this point, and I'm just doing the same process. I'm applying the mixture from the tips to the mid section. I'm not going all the way up to the roots because I do not want my roots to be lightened. I want my roots to remain a dark color simply because of the style or color effect as I should say that I'm going for. But you wanna make sure you're working that product all the way through the ends, all the way through the hair. You can even take a comb and go through it to make sure every strand of the hair is getting a product on it you want to make sure it is fully indulged in that product so make sure you're working it in this is me working a product through with the comb like i mentioned just to make sure every strand of the hair is getting that product on there don't be afraid to use a comb to make sure or if you don't want to use a comb you can even use a brush but make sure you are getting that product everywhere So I ran out of our mixture so I went ahead and made a little bit more off camera. This one is a little bit thinner than the first mixture that we started out with. As you can see the hair is starting to transition. If you do notice it looks like the hair is turning more of a green color rather than a blonde and that is because I previously already had color on this hair. So what you can do as an alternative they have a color remover. You can use color remover rather than using the bleach to lighten the hair because the color remover is going to remove whatever color that you have on that hair that's close to a 612 color so it's still going to do lightening but not in a bleaching process more of a removing a color so i could have did that as an alternative but i wanted to save money and this video was recorded during a time of quarantine so there was no beauty supply stores open i had to use what i had in the house which was bleaching powder and that's what i did 
um and this part you just see me working it through all the sections rubbing everything together giving her a really good massage running from the mid of the hair all the way down to the tips making sure all the product is on there there is no product left behind working it in there and getting it going okay and just fyi this was already starting to get hot like i was like low-key semi burning my hand in the midst of this i did not expect it to get that hot i've never felt hair get that hot before thought i was about to start a fire but i didn't i survived but i'm just working it in there at this point you see me rubbing it a little bit at the top closer to the roots but at this point it really doesn't matter because it's not going to make much of a difference i'm really not rubbing it all the way in so it'll be fine um we're gonna wrap the hair up and i believe i let this sit for about 25 minutes before i washed it out so this is after i've let it sit for 25 minutes um as you can see it's light into a really nice brown color i'm just going to sit here and rinse out all this product make sure the water is completely clear before i do decide to shampoo it Once I made sure that all the product is out of the hair, I went ahead and shampooed it. I'm using Shimmering Light Shampoo. And I'm going to lather up the hair really, really, really good. Make sure I get all in between the nooks and crannies. And then I am going to rinse that out. This Shimmering Light Shampoo helps whenever you're lightening your hair. It gets rid of the brassiness and tries to tone everything out. If you really wanted to do a really good toning job, you normally apply it to the hair. Let it sit for two to three minutes and then wash it out. But all that toning is not needed for this point since I'm not going to keep it a light color. I'm going to go to a dark color so I really don't need it to be toned. Having the difference in shades for a dark color is a lot more appealing than having a consistent look for a light color. So after I rinsed out all that soap, I went ahead and went in with the Shimmering Lights Conditioner. Again, if you want to tone your hair, if you're determined to have it toned and brassiness out, you can let the conditioner sit for two to three minutes and then go ahead and wash it out. But I didn't need that for my process for each its own. I just went ahead, lathered it in, rubbed my fingers through a little bit, made sure it was on the tips because that's mostly important. And then I just went ahead and rinsed it out after. So if you want it to turn, let it sit two to three minutes, come back, rinse it out. Rinsed out all of my product and I did a good towel dry and now we're up to my favorite part. So I'm gonna be using Limelight Green and Hunter Green in the water dye method. I love this water dye method. I don't know who invented it, but whoever it did is a freaking genius. This is like watercolor on a wig. It is super easy, super fast, and it is not time consuming at all. Once I mix in all my colors, you're gonna see me start to dip in my ends first. Once those are fully saturated, I'm gonna start to dip in more and more until the whole wig is saturated, and I let that sit for about 25 minutes. 20 to 25 minutes so i let the hair sit in the water for about 20 minutes normally i let it sit overnight but i didn't do that today and then i went in my kitchen to rinse it out um made sure the water was completely clear and no coloring left behind and then i went in with some neutralizing shampoo and conditioner that's just going to help keep the hair nice and shiny and moisturized and it's really great for colored or texturized hair and it smells super awesome and this is how it came out after i washed and colored it and let me just tell you this green color yeah it's like i'm living for it i love it it's beautiful like get you some so of course i had to use a heat protectant which is my trust and May heat protectant um it's a keratin smooth i got it from target it was like eight bucks i think 
Um, it's really great for heat protecting. I use it when I'm blow drying or flat ironing it. Not only do I use it on my wigs, but I also use it on my natural hair. And it smells great, if I did not mention that already. And um, I'm going to go in with my blow dryer that has the comb teeth on it and start blow drying from the tips and work my way up. I want this hair to be as straight as possible. Later on in the video, um, I'm not sure if I edited it out or not, you're going to see me change between um, blow dry tips. I then went in with just the regular tip and a comb. So this is the look that I got after it has been straightened and now it is time to cut. Um, FYI, these are some cheap $20 clippers that I got from the 99 cent store, but they seem to do the job. And, um, normally when I'm doing blunt cuts or like bob cuts, I usually use scissors, but I wanted to try it with the razor method since I had already seen a previous video with the razor. So, I'm using the razor comb that came along with the razor and of course the comb and chase method. Um... As I get a little further down, I did realize that the bob cut was becoming uneven, but don't worry, I did go back and I did straighten it out, so in case you notice that, don't come for me, i seen it already and I corrected it, so yeah. Um, this part was actually kind of fun because I've never cut a wig using clippers before, so this was a new experience for me and I actually enjoyed it. So I actually had like this one section of hair that did not want to cut for nothing and it was really starting to frustrate me and I was determined to get it cut. I was like two seconds away from grabbing some scissors and I believe this is also the point where I realized it was not even and I just went back over it and evened it out. So like I said, yes, I seen it. Yes, I fixed it. Don't come for me, boo boo. My big head is like all in a camera at this part. I'm sorry y'all, but I was just trying to make sure everything was fine and perfect. So bear with me. There we have it. I'm just catching the ends, but this is the finished look. Okay, so at this point, I kind of went ahead and did like an extra step off of camera. I was not satisfied with the green color that it was. I wanted it to be a lot more darker. So I purchased another bottle of the um, green dye and I went ahead and added that onto the hair off camera. And at this point, I am satisfied with the color that I got. It's nice, rich, greenish, bluish kind of color, which is the color that I wanted. Um, I decided to keep the hair in the same curly pattern that it is in because I just fell in love with this pattern after it was washed and how it came back to life. And it was just like, yes, I'm going to keep it. Um, you just see me towel drying it a little bit at this point, but just take a look at that color. That color is so rich and so green. It almost looks like an emerald color. I just love it. So at this point of the video, you're going to see me put some cream of nature leave-in conditioner on the hair just to help it stay moisturized and keep that nice shiny effect to it. And who doesn't love leave-in conditioner? Like it's the best thing you can ever use. I'm gonna also go in with my razor comb at this point and just tease the ends a little bit make sure that everything lays into each other um, all the ends are symmetrical 
and give the hair just a little bit of a layer a little bit of a difference and the lengths so um, you know just so it can show off that color just a little bit more so I went in a little bit with my razor comb um, this razor comb is about three dollars from your local beauty supply store At this point, I'm just playing around with the curls, running my fingers through and making sure everything is defined. I'm in love with the color. I'm in love with the final touch. We're just going to put her on and see how she looks. 